Hi, this is Sally Wood for Being Inspired, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bolster pillow. This has to be, I think, 60 inches by 10, between 10 and 11 inch diameter. And we're also doing an upcycle, so the lady's given me some fabric, and I will be taking it to pieces and reworking it. So let's get on with it. The first thing I'm going to do is take the pieces off that I need. The first piece is the top. I'm just going to cut round the side here where the piping is. I'm not going to use this piping. I think I'm going to put a contrast of black on. I think that will work quite nicely. The next piece I need is the zip. I'm just going to initially cut it out so that I have the pieces I need and then I can get rid of the rest of this. I've had people in the past say, well, you know, it's easier if you just remake it. Um, not really. One, I've got to cut everything out, and two, I've then still got to remeasure it. So, in some ways, it's a longer job to do a remake, but it's always worth recycling fabrics if you can, because you've got to cut the pieces you need and then remove stitches. But it's better than chucking all of this into a bin and throwing it in the landfill. When I make bolster pillows and I can't find an inside that I can use, and make them. The ends have to be 10.5 but the inner needs to be a bit wider so I'm actually going to make that 12 inches because I need to cut this in a straight line first. I'll just double check that I've got enough on that. I'm going to cut this end off then it needs to be 61 inches long because it's the inside. I'm going to make it a little bit longer as well as a little bit wider. So I'm just going to cut down here like this to straighten everything off. I need the exterior to be 61 finished, which means I have to cut it at 62. But I usually have this an inch longer, so that means I've got to cut it to 63. So that's my 30. Okay, perfect. So I'll cut this piece off. Having marked my 63, I'm just going to pull that and that in. Shake it out and then create my fold and cut line. It takes a little minute to smooth everything into place. Once I've done that, I can just start cutting. Now I'm going to cut the ends. I'm going to do one at a time. Fold it like you would with a piece of paper into quarters. I need a diameter of 12 inches. I'm going to cut it with a radius of 6. And I put my mark of the six on the corner like this and cut. Then I twist it slightly and cut up to that mark. And after a while, you start forming a quarter of a circle. You could find a plate or a cup or anything else to help you with these. If you don't have a plate or a cup or a circle of the right size, this is one of the easiest ways to do it. It's a little bit tight at the top, but it'll be fine. Having done that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut the next quarter to the outside of the quarter circle that I've already cut. I have one circle that's 12 inches wide, or thereabouts. There we go, 12 inches. And I'm not going to do that for the second side, I'm just going to pop that down like that, hold it steady, and then just cut around it. And I've got two ends to my bolster, or however many bolsters you want to cut. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this under here with the round top and bottom. I've got the stitch length into a number five and I'm going to put a stay stitch running the side of the foot along the outside of the piece of fabric. And as you sew, let it twist underneath. And it's just like doing stay stitching in dressmaking. I find a lot of dressmaking techniques are quite useful in upholstery and the interior decorating. Having done that to both outside edges, I'm going to find the salvaged edge is the length of the cushion. Pop this under here on either the warp or the weft threads, giving me about two to three centimeters, inch, inch and a half for the seam and pop it down. I've also given myself half an inch seam allowance and leave it on the longest stitch because that doesn't matter. Nobody's seeing it. It doesn't have to look pretty. I'm going to sew it into place. As I go, I'm going to bring the circular side up to the straight side. Keep the straight edge straight all the time. Because of the stay stitching, it means you can't pull it. It just has to come in and do its thing. Some fabrics are really soft and will walk, so that's why I use stay stitching. As you come round the side, towards where you started, Stop a good few inches away, four to five centimeters will be fine. 
having got one end in, it's easier to do it this way. I could mathematically work out how much fabric I need, but I'm not going to. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to roll in this length of fabric to here and give it a generous seam allowance and I'm going to pin it like that. So if I pull this out, it would fit. And now I'm going to just cut this length off, lay it out and measure up from the edge of the seam there to here. Make sure everything's straight. Is 17 and a half inches. I'm running this on the end of the salvage and I'm gonna cut up 17 and a half inches all the way to the other end of the fabric. It takes a little minute. To say, I could work it out mathematically, but sometimes your half inch seam allowance might vary and then this might vary. So this is the easiest way to do it. Pull the end back away from the seam that I'm going to put in. Put the two raw edges together. I can see my pin marks so all I have to do is pop those under there and into place. It's a very generous half inch. Now that's in place I'm going to sew most of the way down here. I don't need to do forward and back because I'll be sewing it straight into place in a minute. But I will come down here nearly to the end. Do a reverse stitch. Move this across just a little way, line it up, drop that down, do forward in reverse, keeping the same distance, and sew to the end. The original piece that I put in, I slide that back under there, open the seam up so it's nice and flat, and carry on sewing that into position. So you start off over your stitches and finish off on the other side, so that's nice and secure. On the other end, open the seam up, pop that down like that, at the other end. I always start where it's got a straight weave, so either on the warp or the weft thread. Pop that into place, then sew that in with the half inch seam allowance. And it should, with luck, fit exactly where it needs to. As I'm coming into the seam for the second side, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of discrepancy, it won't notice. Pull it into place, open the seam up, and over stitch the stitches you've already put in. I'm using the filler from the Firm Pillows for back sleepers. I can buy two or three of these and I don't have to have a big box of filler then. I actually have three for this project, I think that will do. And what I'm going to do is push that into the end, see how well this goes. I actually do have a box of filler if I need it, because this is going to take quite a bit. When I'm happy with how full it is, these have automatically folded along the seam line, pull them across and secure them and start either end because if there's any discrepancy I can even that out as I go. I don't think there will be. It looks a bit knobbly but I think once everything is in the outer casing it will smooth out a bit. I'm going to stitch it shut. I'm going to come up behind my stitching and across through the fold and then through the fold on the other side. It's less than a quarter of an inch stitch length. Go exactly opposite like that and up and pull it through. Wherever you've come up Go opposite and along, opposite and along, on the other side. This is a ladder stitch often used in many upholstery projects. And eventually this will all close up. I've sewn that shut. It's quite firm. It's relatively firm. I used to sometimes buy foam forms. I don't have access to everything that I used to. So I'm trying to show you things you can do for yourself if you don't have the resources because you're a hobbyist not in business. So the two ends of this bolster pillow need to be ten and a half inches and I'm a little bit short. If I measure to eleven and a half and then on down see what I've got. It's better if you put a half inch seam allowance on things than to be skimpy but sometimes you can get away with it. That brings me down to I've got this rounded edge here I'm not sure how much I'm gonna have in there. I'm gonna make that 11 inches and put quarter of an inch seam allowances on. It's not like it's going to be used violently, it's not like somebody's going to be sitting in it or anything. I'm lucky because this one has an easy pattern match. It comes here and here. I'm going to just pull that straight along there and then I'm just going to cut along the fold like that so I've got at least a straight edge on one end of the bolster. Like I did on the lining, fold that into four. I need the diameter to be 11 so I'm going to cut this at five and a half. Keeping that corner almost static. I'm just turning either the fabric or the ruler. 
and pivoting at that point. It's slower, once I've got one I can use it to cut the other. It's thick fabric, I only ever cut one layer at a time because if you cut two or more you sometimes cause the fabric to alter its shape. So it's easier to do it this way. A little bit difficult to get that one edge, it's a bit close. There's my first circle. It's not exactly a perfect circle but it's round enough for this project. Pop that on there and again just cut all the way around. I've got some black fabric here which I'm just going to cut on the bias like this. So I'm going to cut a few strips off, I think maybe four strips off, about one and a half inches to make the piping up. So I just run the edge of my ruler on the side there and cut up. This fabric has a pile to it so I'm going to make sure that the pile is going down. I'm going to put it on a 2.4 this is the salvage so I've kept the salvage at the top if you always try to keep things in order they're easier to follow later on I've got my piping foot in it has a groove so everything stays in place pop the piping inside the fabric fold it over pop it underneath I usually leave maybe an inch to two, two centimeters at the back just in case I have to pull it through extend the stitch to the longest which is a five and then sew into position like this. I've split this off from the next one. I'm just going to cut that back to within a quarter of an inch, open it up, pop the piping against that. It usually holds but just in case it doesn't, we'll check in a minute. Double check that the seams are still open. Some fabrics they close quite easily. Now I'm going to sew down to the next one. I only have a quarter of an inch for the seam allowance so I'm going to just cut that back a little way that I can see everything that's underneath my foot and line it up. It's probably within quarter of an inch of the stitching holding the piping into position. The warp or the weft thread are the ones that I need to be working with to start off with. I think that's probably a longer one. I'm going to line that up with the fabrics, especially the one underneath, not so much this one. This will move in and out, but with the outside edge of this fabric running along the side of my foot there, that will give me a quarter of an inch seaming allowance. So I'm going to just bring this round as I go. It's still on the longest stitch. I'm going to sew that into place. Because I cut this on the bias it really shouldn't need to be clipped. It should go in quite nicely. I'm just pivoting the fabric as I go and try to make the curvature on the circle as smooth as possible. It should actually go in quite nicely. Because it's only got quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. I am going to cut this back. I'm also going to cut some of the inside of this back too. I don't usually do it this way, but it's awkward to get the seam allowances when you don't have enough fabric in the flange. Cut that back too. And then this one, I'm going to overcut. See where the end of that is? I'm going to cut it to here. Make sure that that almost butts up to the piping underneath and cut that. This is really a cheats way of doing piping cord, by the way. So I'm going to bring this one in across the top. Pull this fabric underneath out so it's like that. Push that down on top. And then sew it into position. That's what it will look like when it's sewn together. The whole idea is that everything looks neat and tidy. I've had to straighten up this piece of fabric. I found the pattern repeat that was going down the center here and folded it into place. And then I'm running this down at 18 and a quarter and cutting this side off as I go. Then I have a straight side. I'm hoping that I've still got enough fabric to go around the bolster. If not, I'll have to add to this side. I really dislike a long that match because it's easy to get it out of kilter. Just make sure everything's flat and take your time. It's easier to get a straight seam if you've got straight edges. Now I've only cut one side as you can see just this side the other's a little bit wonky but if I need to I can cut back using this as the straight edge. My join is on this side and I'm going to go to the next straight row of stitches which is here. Again I'm going to have to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It's easier if I keep everything the same once I've done one than to change it. I've cinched the needle in just slightly and I'm going to start a little ways in from there. While I sew I'm going to roll this in. The stitching should go a little bit closer to the stitching that's already in there. See it kind of wrinkles up a little bit on that side but that's all right. That is absolutely acceptable. I prefer to put piping in than stay stitching. As I go around I just bring this back up as I did before. 
I hope this is wide enough. This is the only thing I'm worried about is this is not wide enough. And if not, I'll just have to come up with a solution. I've put strips of fabric in where the zip goes and made a feature of it rather than worry about it. There's always something you can do. So I'm nearly round and I've got plenty of room. That's good. Almost in. It looks like there's going to be plenty. So I'm going to fold that over. I'm going to come in a little bit more, not by very much. I pinned where the seam is going to go, although to be honest, it'll be a little bit further back than where the pin is, because I need it really snug on the flange of the piping, not on the outside of the piping. This is the same as if I was going to be doing any other item. I'm going to measure back and that comes to two and a half inches. When I look down here, it comes out. I think the best thing to do is actually measure around as close to the top as possible how many inches this is. With a soft measuring tape, work it out. I think I've got 36 inches for the fabric. I've actually got to cut it back to 34 inches. I'm going to run this straight edge, because that's the one I cut a short while ago, along 34 inches. On this side, I'm just going to cut up to the end of my ruler. Judging by this, I could have made the ends a little bit wider, but it wouldn't have made very much of a difference. This just takes a little minute, but it's worth doing. I've got to match up this last part. The easiest way to do that is by using the fabric that you've already cut. Line it up so you're cutting basically along the pattern. It might not be very easy for you to see. As I cut it, I can then roll this up along the edge there. Some things take a long time. Almost at the top, pop that under there, then pull this up. That will get me exactly where I need to be. See, there's this pattern folds over onto there. That should be exactly where I want it. If I hadn't, I would have bound both sides and made it wider. And then that comes in like that, raw edge to raw edge. And actually that's a little bit more generous than I want, but it'll be fine. It's better to have a, a really generous edge than to be shy because I've got a zip to put in. So instead of having a exact half inch, I've almost got three quarters of an inch into the seam. I'm pleased with that. While it's still up here, I'm also going to cut it short. I need 61 inches. Pop that on there, measure down to my 30. Move the fabric along. Here's my neck that I've just popped in. Pop that on there so it's level. Measure down to the end. I'm only going to be putting a quarter of an inch. 61, I'm going to cut it at 61 and a half. This is all that's left. There's very little fabric left. Turn this over. Starting where I put the neck, which is here, I'm going to fold it across and pin it up. This is only because there's really not enough fabric for it to keep itself in place. And then I'm going to just come along and find the next part of the pattern that needs to be put into place, which is just here. You can see that it's coming down at an angle. Pop that in again with a needle and as I come over here to this last one the part I need is right there it's coming at an angle here this is always a little bit awkward when patterns do this to you I'm gonna just roll it and keep it in place and cut you have to be very careful when doing this I'm gonna pull against myself put my fingers on there to hold it and then just cut carefully along that fold while my fingers are holding it firmly into place. It might wander a little bit but it should be more or less even and again hold that down and work across. It should be easier this one because when I pull it's got a better line to it. But even so I'm still going to hold it with my fingers and cut up. I've sewn down a little way here so I'm going to pull it back so it's 5 eighths of an inch and I am going to pin that into place. Here's my zip. Take that right the way back so that the teeth are on the edge there and maneuver all of this into position. Try to get the seam that you've done as straight as you can. It's a little bit awkward and that's why I put a little bit extra seam allowance on there. Line the teeth up with the seam and drop the foot down. Now I've got about an inch of zip behind there so it's actually I think level with the back of the foot and now I'm going to sew this into place I can use that as a guide along the side of the zip because this has a pile to it I'm going to angle this into the foot so it's going that way that keeps the zip and the side of the fold in line I'm going to work my way down almost to the end of this zip. Almost being the operative word. I don't want to go to the end of the length of the zip because I need to close up the other side of this. 
I've come down the first side and I am going to stop sewing about four inches, seven centimeters from the end here. I don't want to go to the end because I've got to seal this off. Having got the zip in one side, I'm going to pin the zip to the other side like that because I know it's going to walk, but I don't want it to walk too far. I need it to be as even as possible, especially as I have the end to put in here. Pop that back and pin. I'm going to work my way up. You can see if I do that, it gapes. Pop that across there, it's probably the center, and pin. And then I'll go midway between the two and pin. The fabrics, the zips, they all do different things. It's a bit irritating, but just one of those things. And then again, midway here. Just keeps everything tidy. Start from this end, which is the top, and close this off first so that I don't run the risk of losing my zipper right to the end. I'm gonna go forward and back forward it should hold that end I haven't put that on I'm going to fold this over and the reason I don't like doing it is because I've got to work from the other side of the foot I'm going to pull that down so I've taken the stitches as far back to that piece of fabric as possible that is the stopper for this and as I come down I'm going to be zipping the zipper up I need to tip this side up usually I tip the other side up so that the zip is covered but this is the easiest way to get a bolster pillow to look identical both ends. Keep the side that you're folding over and the fabric on the side of it, so all of this as flat as you can. And the zip wants to rub, unfortunately. I'm going to do this really carefully all the way down. Move the zip down. The underside of the fabric will move back slowly. And you almost get to your zipper, pull it back down, fold it back in. This looks like it might take in the slack. It's really slow progress doing it this way. Seems to be working. As I'm coming down from the top, it is pulling the fabric into place and quite evenly. So I'm just going to finish up this with a bit of luck, evenly enough that both ends match. I've just stopped sewing around the same area as I finished last time. And that looks to have gone in more or less evenly all the way along. So I'm quite pleased with that. Covers the zip up nicely. I'm going to remove the zip completely. Recut it so it's got a nice edge on the end here. And then work out which is the top. Okay, that's the top tooth there. Turn it away from myself and put this back on. This sometimes takes a little while to do, so be patient. The nice thing about these plastic zips is the zipper can go in either way. Metal zips have a little nodule on one side, so you can only put those in one way, but these ones you can do either side. Manage to get the zip on and pop that down there because I don't want to risk losing anything on here. I'm going to hold those even there and it comes out even at the bottom. Slide that underneath the foot and I have to make sure that this comes over where I start. I've got my 5 8 seam allowance, forward, back and then all the way to the end. Then reverse when you get to the end. So this is why you put the zip in before you finish putting the end on. Pop that down, put the zip on that seam and sew to the end. And reverse. I sewed that to it, so I've got to unstitch that. Slow job today. Bit of a bind, easily done. Start again. I don't have very far to go, so I'm just going to finish off this side. I'd much rather show you that I do make mistakes. Finish it off, do the reverse. I'm going to swap the foot over so it's on the other side. Pull this over so that it, this side twists up, and sew this side into place too. And again at the bottom, reverse got a piece of fabric here which I'm going to fold over pop along the end of the zip now you only really sew from the either side of the zip you don't want to be going further over first back over and then finish up then locate the front of the zip not behind the zip do that and then bring that one end through so when you do the second end there's the flat seam there there's my threads there that are straight pop this underneath cinch the needle in closer to the piping cord and just sew everything should work in evenly because it should be the same size as the other end i'm hoping i got everything right because this is going to be awkward to undo if i can't see it Almost there. Bolster pillows are quite easy. They're just a little bit daunting. It looks like it's going to go in evenly. So I'm just coming round the last part and it looks like it's going to fit in really nicely. 
I have done these in the past and I've had to take them to pieces. Might be something simple, the rope cording or the trim I've used just hasn't worked. Go over my stitches and finish. Okay, so now the only thing left to do is to squish this long sausage into its cover. You start one end, make sure that's secure in there, and then on down to the other end. This is a bit springy, so I'm going to squish this end into this end of the cover too. The filler goes in better if you put a cover on it. That is my experience. And now I'm going to just zip it up. Looks relatively even. There we go. And I've just hidden the zip in there. I think they'll be pleased with that. I think that looks pretty neat. Thank you for joining me on this little project. I think, I actually think it looks really cute. I'm sure that the lady will appreciate it for an upcycle project as well. It's a little bit lumpy at the moment, but once they've got the pillows up against it and they're using it, it will flatten out a bit. Hopefully I've imparted a few useful tidbits to you that you can use, even on a big bolster or a small bolster, the technique is the same. So if you want to hear more from me, subscribe, hit the bell button, and a few thumbs up would be brilliant. And in the meantime, see you later, take care, ciao.